It's a great pleasure to participate in this workshop on HIV in adolescence in 2021. Today, I'm gonna to talk about HIV cure. What does it mean and what's on the horizon? I'll start with an overview of um, what are the barriers to curing HIV? Why aim for HIV remission and cures? Describe the cases of HIV cure, remission, and post-treatment control that inspire the field of HIV cure research and what we've learned so far, and how do we get there for most of the people living with HIV. As you all know, combination antiretroviral treatment is highly effective in controlling HIV replication to undetectable levels in blood plasma. This state of HIV suppression can be maintained for decades and indeed is associated with improved survival in children and adults living with HIV. Unfortunately, antiretroviral treatment alone is not curative. Once antiretroviral treatment is stopped, the virus promptly rebounds in the blood plasma within two to four weeks of stopping antiretroviral treatment. Indeed, even after a decade of being treated with antiretroviral drugs, the virus returns with the same kinetics of return, two to four weeks, and the virus comes back. So what this tells us is that there are infected cells or reservoir cells that persist in infected persons on ARP that cannot be targeted by antiretroviral treatment. The same is true for children living with HIV. And even those who are treated from infancy who have very small viral reservoirs, highlighting the, the challenges of achieving HIV cure for persons living with HIV. Now, a major barrier to HIV cure is a reservoir for HIV that is established almost immediately after infection. This reservoir resides in memory CD4 T cells. The memory CD4 T cells are resting, meaning that the virus is maintained in a quiet or dormant state within these cells. Within resting memory CD4 T cells, the virus integrates into the genome of the host or infected person and lays there silently. Importantly, these um, silent proviruses can readily be reactivated to produce infected, um, in infectious virus. Now, how is this memory CD4 T cell reservoir established? The, the general theory is that this reservoir of cells is established when you're developing your immunologic memory to viral infections or to vaccines, when your naive CD4 T cells differentiate into memory CD4 T cells. Memory CD4 T cells are designed to live for your lifetime, and this renders HIV a lifelong infection. So the major goal of HIV cure therapeutics is to target or eliminate these reservoir cells. Importantly, these reservoir cells are distributed throughout the body within the gut associated lymphoid tissue, in your lymphoid organs, and in the reproductive tract of adults, and perhaps even within the central nervous system, a place that's been very challenging to prove as a reservoir site. And so the overarching goal of HIV cure and remission research is to find ways to eliminate or purge these viral reservoirs, limit their size, and combined with strategies to boost HIV-specific immune responses in order to control HIV whenever it emerges from these reservoir cells. So I wanna start with some keywords and definitions in the field so that we're all on the same page. Um, so the, the terms that are used in the field are cure, remission, post-treatment control, and elite control. By cure, what we mean is lifelong control of HIV without the need for any ARVs. Remission is a period of temporary control, and it hasn't really been fully defined how long that should be, but definitely beyond the two to four week period on the order of weeks to years, control of HIV without ARVs. Post-treatment control is a unique state that has been recently identified um, in adults treated during acute infection, where um, going off antiretroviral treatment does not lead to virus rebound. And then elite control, are individuals, a unique subset of individuals who achieve spontaneous control of HIV without any ARVs and is due to an immune mediated mechanism. So how do we achieve cure, remission, post-treatment control and elite control? For cure, we need to get rid of all of the reservoir cells that are bearing infectious virus. 
for remission, you can get rid of almost all of them, but then have some immune effector mechanisms that can help control these cells when the virus emerges. Post-treatment control, again, it's in individuals treated during acute infection, and it's not yet identified how these individuals achieve this state. And then elite control is rendered by your genetic makeup, whether you bear these protective alleles such as HLA-B27 or B57. So why aim for HIV remissions and cure? We know that art is life-saving. Indeed, a child with perinatal HIV can expect to live into the third or fourth, perhaps even fifth decade of life with effective antiviral treatment. An adult can also expect to reach normal life expectancy. But together, art is lifelong and comes with long-term toxicities, including stigma. In pediatric populations, virologic failure is high. Up to 40% of children do not maintain virologic suppression. Therefore, highlight the importance of aspiring for art free remission and cure. So the field of HIV cure research was inspired by the first case shown on the left in 2009, the Berlin patient, Timothy Ray Brown, who unfortunately passed away the end of 2020, of uh, leukemia, not of HIV. And in Mr. Brown, what was identified is he developed cancer and received a bone marrow transplant with specialized cells, CCR5 Delta 32 cells that are known to be resistant to HIV infection. And he received this treatment along with chemotherapy for cancer. And this led to sufficient clearance of HIV reservoir cells to the point that when he went off antiretroviral treatment, he didn't experience that prompt rebound in viremia. In fact, he went for 12 years without experiencing the viremic rebound and was therefore declared cure of HIV. It took 10 years to find a second case of cure. And this patient, a London patient, Mr. Adam Castillo, has also received a bone marrow transplant with CCR5 Delta 32 cells for treatment of cancer and has been um, considered cured of HIV. These two cases inspires the field of HIV cure research. Now, it's important to point out that what we learned from these cases is that what's shown in green is the dramatic reduction of HIV infected cells that occurred from this chemotherapeutic strategy and transplantation, giving us a benchmark for what our strategies should try to achieve to get to cure and remission in infected in persons living with HIV. And so the lessons we've learned from these cases is that indeed it, these HIV reservoir cells can be eradicated from a person living with HIV to lead to a cure. But what is needed is not feasible for the 38 million persons living with HIV, which is chemotherapy and, and bone marrow cell, stem cell transplantation with specialized cells. But it gives an opportunity for those living with HIV who develop cancer to then seek out getting these specialized cells to potentially achieve cure for both diseases, HIV and on their cancer. And so while um, transplantation and cure is not so feasible, what we identified in the interim in searches for uh, cases of HIV cure was this um, state of remission or post-treatment control. And in 2013, we reported on the case of remission in the Mississippi baby who was treated very early in life, in the first uh, 32 hours of life, and experienced 27 months of remission or virologic control of art. Simultaneously, the French group reported on adults treated during acute infection, the Visconti cohort, who, who achieved up to um, seven years of HIV suppression of art, giving us clues that in a subset of individuals, if you treat very early or early in the course of HIV infection, a very few subset of individuals can achieve remission or post-treatment control, but giving us um, information on potential strategies to achieve cure. Now, the three cases of um, HIV remission in, in children arose from a very early treatment, as in the case of the Mississippi baby, but subsequently in 2016 and 2019, two adolescents were identified who were treated early, meaning around three months of age with antiretroviral treatment, and subsequently were identified to be um, the post-treatment controls with no plasma virus rebound for over 12 years in the adolescent, um, the French adolescent, and in, in the South African boy, up to 8.5 years of uh, post-treatment control. And so what we've learned from these cases is what an HIV remission profile would look like 
shown here on the right is the virologic remission profile of the Mississippi baby, where you can see it by the closed circles, there's clear infection in, in this infant with detectable plasma viremia, but received an intervention such as very early treatment within um, 36 hours of life. Off art, you don't see any rebound in viremia for until 27 months later when viremic rebound occurred. So from these cases altogether, the um, HIV remission and cure uh, therapeutic agenda was developed. And the main one for um, perinatal infections is really initiating very early antiretroviral treatment as we know when the timing of infection occurs. And so several clinical trials are underway of very early treatment in perinatal infection to achieve remission. In um, adults living with HIV, the strategies that have been mostly studied are referred to as latency reversal strategies or shock and kill approaches to reawaken HIV from its latent state. And then combined with immunotherapies to see whether these can um, control HIV replication of antiretroviral treatment. Additional strategies are on the way to also um, facilitate getting to HIV remission and cure as shown in, in the lower part of this slide. But to remind you again, the overarching goal is to decrease the reservoir size by several thousand fold to achieve this state. Uh, I, I mentioned the shock and kill approach, and this is the approach that's been most studied in adults using latency reversing agents. And the goal here is to force HIV to express itself from the silent state to an active state to then force these cells to die or to be seen by the immune system. And several agents have been studied in adults, um, mostly um, from the class referred to as HISTAC inhibitors shown here. And in these um, small in, in proof of concept studies in adults, these studies have shown that indeed these agents can reawaken the virus with respect to its transcribing its viral genome. But um, in, as I'll show you later, these strategies have um, no meaningful reduction in reservoir size to achieve remission. And so alternate approaches are under study in terms of combining these latency reversing agents or shock and kill approaches with immune enhancing strategies. And so some of the immune enhancing strategies that are very exciting and that are being studied in, in the field of um, perinatal infections and also in adult infections is combining antiretroviral treatment with these immunotherapeutics, such as broadly neutralizing antibodies. Broadly neutralizing antibodies are also being used for HIV prevention in, in adults and are being studied for prevention in, in infants. Um, but what these um, antibodies do, they target the CD4 molecule on the virus. They're long acting, so um, allows an individual to not have to require daily antiretroviral drugs to keep the virus in check. And in studies in adults, a small study showed that when given in combination to adults, there was a delay of return in, in virus by up to 21 weeks compared to our usual two to three weeks seen when antiretroviral treatment is stopped. So these strategies, while they're not um, showing large shifts in, in preventing virus rebound, gives us hope and clues in terms of how to control HIV rebound in individuals stopping antiretroviral treatment. Additional approaches underway, in addition to promoting the virus to reactivate and express itself, are really ways, can we find ways to silent the virus from um, reactivating itself? And most of these studies are still um, in, in vitro, not in vivo yet. And then how do we edit the, the can we edit the viral genome to make the virus um, defective and therefore not infectious? So in, in adults, there are several um, trials underway looking at these various categories of interventions to um, perturb the reservoir to achieve HIV remission and cure. And I know this is, is a workshop focused on adolescents and the, the entry criteria into these studies are 18 years of age and older. But when you actually look at enrollment into these clinical trials, most of the study participants are actually older individuals and mostly white males. So intensive efforts are needed to engage um, our community of youth and adolescents living with HIV 
to facilitate participation in, in some of these studies to understand these interventions in our younger population who may be in better immune health in terms of being able to achieve remission and cure. I, I wanna say in terms of where we are with remission and cure trials in children and youth through the Impact Clinical Trials Network, which is an NIH funded clinical trials network, there are several clinical trials underway looking at very early therapy as has been done in the case of the Mississippi baby, starting therapy within the first 48 hours of life to see if we can achieve remission, early therapies, combined with these broadly neutralizing antibodies, again, to reduce reservoir size for remission. And then given the substantial morbidity with um, CNS disease in our youth living with HIV to understand the extent to which the central nervous system serves as a viral reservoir for HIV. I'm um, pleased to say that our HIV remission and cure um, agenda has a global footprint with 38 sites in, in 12 countries where the burden of HIV infection lies in, in children with over a thousand participants enrolled so far. Highlighting the um, uptake in, in our communities in trying to move this agenda forward towards remission and cure. And so in summary, there, there are certain implications and limitations for the cure agenda. But I hope I, what I've shown you today is that there's been substantial progress made in advancing the science of HIV remission and cure research in children and adults in the past 10 years. And this has been facilitated by tremendous investment by the NIH and industry to change the treatment paradigm of HIV towards remission and cure rather than lifelong ARVs. A major challenge though is we can't, we don't quite know how to identify a person who's in HIV remission or who has been cured. None of our laboratory assays can detect this state. And it means stopping ARVs and watch for the virus to return and, and how long it takes to return to identify this state in our clinical trials. Nevertheless, this focus has led to exciting prospects for immunotherapeutics as part of HIV treatment, such as with broadly neutralizing antibodies. And altogether will be transformative for HIV treatment and across all ages in the near future. I wanna end with um, the recent funding of the Pave Martin Delaney Collaboratory, which is a, a large um, collaborative grant to foster uh, research in the field of um, children and adolescents living with HIV with a large component of community empowerment that's led by Dr. Alison Agu, um, Dr. Mark Cotton with our Community Engagement Coordinator, Jessica salz -Riedel. And we hope with this um, Martin Delaney Collaboratory that we will be able to engage our community and empower our community of youth and children living with HIV to move this agenda forward. With that, I wanna thank you um, for your attention and to acknowledge the um, HIV cure community or funding agencies and most importantly, our clinical trial participants without whom none of this would be possible. Thank you.